Hey everybody, welcome to Maine's Movie Thoughts. I'm Jermaine and Thor Love. Whoa, 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 just... whoa, 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 whoa. What are you doing? Oh, well, since Jane is the new Thor, I thought maybe I could be no, the new Maine no, movie. No, 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 no. This, this is not that. No. No. All right. Just go. You should go. Thor Love and Thunder is the sixth film in the MCU's Phase 4, and Thor is also the only hero in the Marvel Cinematic Universe to have four solo films. Now, when you think about that, when you think about Thor having four solo films, especially after how not well received the first two movies were, this, this is a huge achievement. And before you jump in the comments and say that you love Thor The Dark World, who was that? By name. Who, who was that? Without Googling. No, I'm not, I'm not gonna tell you. You you tell me. Who, who was that? Tell me down in the comments if you knew who that was without looking his name up. Exactly. Taika Waititi follows his Marvel directorial debut in Thor Ragnarok and follows it up and rides that momentum all the way to here, Thor Love and Thunder. And that's what I really like about this movie. I really like that Taika not only stayed on to direct this movie, but the style of Thor has changed from the basically the first half of the MCU onto this next part where we get this kind of comedy aspect of Thor. The Shakespearean viking really wasn't working so when they introduced thor in the new light and ragnarok i really thought that was smart and i thought it was smart to capitalize it in this movie however with every good comes with bad because sometimes i did feel like it was a bit too jokey a bit too i want to make you laugh all the time but my thing is if you're gonna do a comedy just be unashamedly and do a comedy Either surprisingly or unsurprisingly, this movie is just full of heart. Uh, at, at the same time, when you're laughing, you also just are is filled with a swell of emotions. But one thing I like that this movie didn't do that other just MCU movies did and didn't undercut a deep moment with a direct joke afterward. And I feel like Marvel, especially this later series of Marvel films has been doing, besides Black Widow, is really getting the villains right. Christian Bale as Gore the God Butcher is flat out amazing. I really wish they would have upped the runtime and gave him more screen time because he absolutely deserved it. Not only was Gore the God Butcher menacing for the time he had on screen, but you also believed in him. You believed in, you believed that he believed that what he was fighting for was good, which in my estimation marks a good fictional villain when you actually understand what they're doing as opposed to, hey, I just want to take over the world. I kind of wish he would have done the voice though. Spoiler alert, he doesn't, but kind of wish he would have done the voice. And I guess you could paint this as a negative, but I'm gonna say that it's a positive. There's a scene in this movie, and I'm not gonna give anything away, or too much rather, but there's a scene in this movie where he is interacting with a god and it kind of seems like they're pulled from two different movies. Now the reason why I like this is when you have an otherworldly figure and you have pretty much like a mortal being, they shouldn't seem like they're they're coming from the same spaces. They should seem like they're coming from different parts of reality. Natalie Portman comes back as the mighty Thor and I have to say, one, I never thought she would come back. I, I thought I read reports that she hated or she not necessarily hated, but I guess just didn't like working for the MCU, which I can see because even Chris Hemsworth himself has said, after Thor The Dark World, you know, he just felt like the character was bland and he just got sick of playing him. I just became a little sick of what I was doing, a little sort of, became too familiar. But whenever she's on the screen, oh my goodness, she, she actually, her and Gore actually steal this movie for me just because the storyline with Jane and then how good Christian Bale is, I love them in this movie. That's not taking anything away from Tessa Thompson or Chris Hemsworth. But one thing I think that they got right with Thor is they realized Chris Hemsworth is genuinely funny. He is He's hilarious. And from where they took Thor from the first two movies, from that 
very monotone. I'm always sad. You actually feel like Thor is just on a journey with this and he's really trying to find himself. And then they were like, hey, Chris Hemsworth is funny. Let's actually incorporate that to his character that he's playing. Now, was this movie perfect? Absolutely not. There's, you know, just sometimes just a little bit too much humor in it. There's something that, it's a running gag in the whole movie that when it happened the first three times, funny. When it happened the 10th, 11th, and 12th time, it was like, okay, I, I get it. There are two things about this movie that I really think is great for Marvel. Number one is, Phase four of the MCU right now is so jam packed with movies and TV shows at the moment. You're gonna start needing to separate them. So with Thor Love and Thunder, they said this is gonna be a comedy. This, this is what we're shooting for here. So it doesn't feel like the rest of the stuff that we've already seen. Not only is it a comedy though, but it's also filled with a lot of heart and a lot of love. Also with this movie, this movie has to be, this movie and Shang-Chi, I'll give Shang-Chi some credit, but this movie is gorgeous. There's a part, and you've seen it in a trailer, so I'm not really giving it away. You go to like the shadow dimension place or realm that is basically like black and white and it just colors just start flashing and it is simply gorgeous. I would recommend this movie 100%, especially if you're a Marvel fan, it's a good time Turn off your brain. You don't have to think about if it connects to any of the MCU properties right now because your head will explode. But it's a nice standalone adventure. Thor has a fourth solo film that I really think is going to be a big hit. And I think you're going to have a good time seeing it. Until next time, everybody.